Hey, for lifers, this is Pig for Life. I know this is a little late and always last minute, but that's because Fans Toys Warthog took a sweet time getting here. It didn't get here until like 7 o'clock, so I needed some time to practice, some time to prep, and so, and there's some uh, really frustrating parts of this transformation, I'm not going to lie. Just this one part, but it's super frustrating. So let's get into it, because it might take me a while. Um, this is Fans Toys Warthog. That's FT-54, their version of a masterpiece power glide, obviously. Um, people have been really excited about this, myself included, given the photos that they showed. Really some clever um, engineering to get this kind of really mass shift like uh, transformation. Hey, Anthony Brown, how's it going? All right. Um, top here, you do have the video instructions. I did follow those. There are some things they don't really show you really well, especially the most frustrating parts. So I'm going to walk you through that. Um, all the boring stuff on the side and bottom. On the back, we get all of the product images. You can see him in robot mode, alt mode with his flight stand attachments, uh, his little open-hearted chest compartment here, and then you get his bio. We're not going to read that, but let's get through this out of packaging. We do get his instructions, which I dropped, left mine in some water, so it got it all wet. Uh, he also has his plastic stat card, uh, like so. So always quite nice, his stats on the back, as well as uh, the uh, bio again. The instructions are, again, pretty good, but uh, again, the one part that's really frustrating is uh, the rear fuselage and the leg section, it's really kind of annoying. Um, it has to be very particular and doesn't show you, um, it doesn't explain to you exactly what needs to be done. So uh, he does come in a styrofoam case as usual with FD-54 embossed in it. Some plastic to protect the nice paint that we're used to getting with Fans Toys figures. He does come in a pseudo robot mode. As you can see here, his waist is reversed and he has one other piece that we have to take care of. So let's just see if he holds still there. He only comes with uh, two accessories really. And then uh, I guess you can call these accessories too, but these are flight stand attachments specifically for flight the Fans Toys flight stand. Hey, hey Dusty Shells. Um, Let's see here. So yeah, th this one is for robot mode. This one's for uh, jet mode. We'll go over those. Hey, Big M, G Tony. Uh, and then he has actual accessories in the form of the alien mask from that one episode where they all are extra aliens for the movie. Um, and then he has one pistol here. And it's kind of a pearlescent painted Pretty, pretty uh, Bumblebee-esque in the kind of design. So let's get this guy into robot mode first. So uh, first of all, what we need to do is rotate him at the waist, 180. You might want to extend the waist here. So if you look at the back here, it kind of has an extension. But you rotate this around. And then you, if it was already extended, mine was already extended, you want to collapse this in. You'll see this is a double joint. This uh, peg will go in here. Just give it a squeeze, and it should peg in just fine. Um, the in video instructions showed that um, the legs were extended. Mine were not, but if they are extended, uh, you can just go ahead and collapse them. There are several sections here that extend, but you want to get it collapsed so that you barely see just the top of the red here. Um, this is one of the more frustrating areas. I'll say, but you can do that and you can barely see any of the red popping out. You shouldn't be able to see like the, um, the, the knee bend and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing that was with mine is the canopy was flipped up. That's not correct either, obviously. What you want to do with that is you want to pull out on the side here. And you'll basically untab either the wings and or the chest. You want the chest piece and that should give you just enough room to rotate this around it's on a swivel here um, you might want to push this um, backpack section in a little bit it'll give you a little bit more room for clearance but it should be tucked in like so and then you can close this up again there's tabs right on the other either side of the neck and with that you should have him all in robot mode let's do a quick 360 of them while we have him here 
Uh, thanks to the 38 of you who are here so far. If you like what the what I'm doing with the review, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Also, participate in the live chat as well as the live poll. If you have any questions, again, since I'm doing the transformation so forth, it's hard for me to keep up with all the questions. Leave them in the Q&A, and I, I take breaks uh, where I answer those questions. So make sure to do that. That's the easiest way to get your questions answered. <laughs> all right, so robot mode, let's do a quick 360. He looks really nice. Um... Out of the package, yeah, I will say he feels a little flimsy, and I think that holds true. And it's not that the materials are bad. The plastic and die cast, which, of which he does have a significant, significant amount, um, all feels great. It's just that um, the way it's engineered, uh, the joints are kind of flimsy, um, especially with these ankles here. They're a little flimsy, so it feels a little flimsier than I would have liked. But the materials themselves are quite nice. He does. He is basically fully painted, as far as I can tell. All the white here is kind of pearlescent. Um, he does have red paint here, um, the thighs as well. So all of that looks pretty much painted. I can't tell exactly which what is unpainted. Um, a few minor areas where the red doesn't match up. You'll see it here on this backpack on my piece. And then on the tail wing, um, you'll see it later in uh, when we transform it. But very minor things, not a huge deal. He does have really nice uh, metallic blue eyes and some silver details. But yeah, he looks pretty clean overall. Uh, not a huge backpack or anything like that. And again, if, aside from... Um, some tolerances in some of the joints he does feel quite solid uh the biggest thing a problem i have with him is some of the uh transformation it's only one part but it's a very major part hey tm reviews hey john walker all right so let's see um what should we do first oh i guess the gun first the gun first uh it's a different tab you know with some of the smaller bots they are doing these weird tabs that go into kind of like the heel of the the, the palm so you just plug that in like so. I don't love this design. Um, I don't feel like it's very solid, but it's it's okay. And he holds it just fine. You can do it in either hand. You'll also see that he has a couple of tabs on either side. Uh, that will go in for alt mode. But for now, we'll push this off to the side. His mask here, the way that works is you have to flip the face around. You actually have to flip the face around for transformation too, which I don't love. Um, just because the, the pa face is painted and any, like, uh, opportunity to potentially scratch it, I do not like. Um, you can try to get it started and then maybe use a spudger, but it is on a kind of long pin that you need to rotate around. And once you have that, you have these tabs that go into that section there, and then you get a nice alien mask and face uh what else do we have here so let's rotate this around again again i don't love this design just because i'm worried that i'm going to be scratching part of the paint because um, again you have to like use your fingernail or something like that I, I wish they had engineered this just a little bit better all right uh, what else is there to talk about? Oh, um, so as I said, he does have two flight stand attachments. The smaller one, how that works is you want to spread the legs. You have this big tab that goes right into kind of his butt area. And then there's a little slot here that corresponds to this tab. So just go ahead and give him a quick squeeze. I don't own the Fans Toys flight stand, but you just tab it on. It's like an, kind of an I-beam. So that's how it works for robot mode. Very simple. Uh, and as you can see, the knees tend to come undone uh, quite a bit. What else is there? Um, let's see the weight. A lot of people always ask about the weight. So in terms of weight, he is... Give it a second to zero out. He's 8.4 ounces or 8.5 ounces. Uh, which is the equivalent of 240 grams. Uh, let's see, com in comparison to my stand-in or my current um, Power Glide, which is DX9's Richtofen, I think, he's 120 grams. So this guy is uh, 100 grams uh, heavier. And he has his gun on him too. So, so 4.2 ounces versus 8.5. 
So quite a bit heavier, not quite double, but still much heavier. You can also see now that we have him out, we'll do some quick comparisons in terms of height. Let me try to get him straightened out a bit. So to do a fair kind of height assessment. Oh, what's going on here? All right, there we go. So you can compare these two. I think most people are looking at these two or have a Rictofin and, and looking to potentially upgrade to um, Warthog gear. You can see he's much taller. Legs are much cleaner as well, I would say, just the calf area, although he does have kind of messy heels. So there you go. Uh, they both have the opening chest compartment, so let me do that. There's this one, and then the easiest way to get to this one is to go ahead and just untab the right side of his body, open that up. This is definitely a lot more screen accurate. Uh, it has kind of like the, um, I don't know, like LED separate light pattern, and the position and shape is more accurate to that one episode. Uh, other comparisons, the only other one that I'm really going to bring out right now is Optimus Prime. That's the one that makes the most sense. Uh, if you have any others that you would like to see, let me know. But um, what else do we have? Uh, let me just bring out one, one fan choice figure because most people ask. Here, we'll bring, bring out Braun real quick so you can see him next to a mini bot. All right. Let's get these off to the side. You guys are always asking for the same comparisons. Yeah, I, uh, I see G. Tony saying, saying um, he made it too big. Um, I don't really know. I didn't check the, the, the scale chart on, on this one. But yeah, uh, as always, those are the comparisons I'm going to do. If you'd like to see one spe a specific character, uh, you can go ahead and donate $1.99 and we'll do it at the end of the review. Yeah, pay up that two bucks because I'm too lazy to do that for everyone for free. All right, so let's go ahead and get into articulation. His head doesn't have a lot. Um, it is on a hinge and a swivel uh, compared to tracks, $2. All right, I'll get you TM at the end. So he doesn't have a lot of up or a lot of down. I was thinking maybe like his neck extended or anything, something like that, but no. Keith Lee says, compare with a bubble tee. I don't have a bubble tee. Pick something else. His rotation does go all the way around, although it does run into a bit here and it might pop up the sides. So the articulation in the, in the head isn't the best. And why isn't this tabbing back in? There we go. Anthony Brown, always with the, the Springer comparison. All right, I got you there. His shoulders rotate around. Their friction jointed can go out like so. He has a bicep swivel. He does have double hinged elbows, although the, the top one doesn't give you all that much range. His wrists do swivel. He has masterpiece style fingers with all four fingers here. G Tony wants two dollars. He donated two dollars. Thanks so much, to G Tony. Uh, let me know if you have a comparison that you want. Man, we're gonna have a lot of comparisons at the end here. Uh, we kind of showed off his waist swivel, so it does go 360. And then he actually has an ab crunch, which is nice. So you can make use of this kind of weird design here that gives you an ab crunch. It's about 45 degrees. Uh, definitely a nice addition. I didn't think he, he would have this based on the design. Uh, but um, he does, so very nice. Nice design there. He has hip skirts on the side here, which get a little bit of movement, as well as hip skirts there. Friction joint going up. He can go a little bit more than 90 going forward. Uh, about 90 going back before you hit that hip skirt. Can go out to the side about, about 90. And again, if you extend this out and untab that, you can get a little bit more. Thigh swivel, which can go 360. Uh, Jonathan Walker, 499. Thanks so much for the 499. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do for you as well, as far as comparisons go. Um, his knee joint is kind of uh, annoying. Um, 
So it, it doesn't go very far, but if you extend the knee, um, you can get a little bit further. So you can get to about 90 degrees, but then you always have to collapse it back down, which is pretty annoying. Um, he does have a swivel at the knee as well. That's really for transformation, but you can use that in conjunction with his thigh swivel. His ankles, uh, as you saw before, they're in kind of a weird kind of design here. So it's not really attached to the foot, to the, the foot's not attached to the leg. It's through these mechanisms here. He does have a little bit of ankle tilt. He actually has more outward tilt than he has inward tilt. He only gets about this much tilt in which is not very much, maybe like five degrees. It's enough though uh, for most poses, but you can go down, you can go up really weirdly and so forth, um, and you can rotate around as well uh, before you start running into this shin cover. All right, is there anything else that I missed in terms of articulation? We talked about the chest. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. A good amount of articulation, um, so I'm not, I'm not upset about that at all. And again, he looks quite good. So his robot mode definitely is very, very solid overall. Um, again, my major complaints are just with um, the um, tolerances and some of the things just kind of like when you mess with it, you're seeing me like some pieces are just untabbing easily and stuff like that. Um, you just have to be kind of mindful of that. But otherwise, it's quite nice. Hard pass after seeing the ankles. Yeah, I mean, it is one of the more annoying parts. And like I said, the... the the friction on here isn't the best, so I'd like to, I would have liked to see more tolerances, uh, tighter tolerances there. But yeah, now we're going to get into the transformation. Um, I'm going to warn you that this might take a little while, just because of one part. The rest of the transformation is actually quite cool, quite easy. But there's one part that is super frustrating. Um, has to do with the knees and the rear fuselage. So uh, let me let me know um, if uh, I mean I'm letting you know now. So. Let's go ahead. First thing we'll do is deal with the arms. Uh, you just want to kind of get them up. First thing we'll do is untab this section here. And then we're going to want to bend the arms out 90 degrees at this weird joint here. You're going to open up this panel, fold in the fist, close that up. And then this whole section here will double hinge outwards. So where the fist went in and stuff. Oops, actually, sorry. You got to actually do the double hinge first before you tuck in the hand. My apologies. I forgot that that does interfere. Close that up. And then from here, it's kind of interesting. You actually rotate this all the way in so it goes uh, collapses in on itself. Then we'll close up that compartment again. And then we're going to rotate down here. We got to extend the wings. They're kind of... Um, accordion on themselves so extend that out and then you're going to want to get this tab where the the um, fist hid um in here so you're going to collapse this on itself where the shoulder will hide and this will tab in there so kind of a cool design there i really do like that uh, we'll do the same thing on this side so again just to show you go ahead and open up this tab bring this out to the side open up the panel extend on that double hinge out like so hide the fist away close up the tab now we're going to go ahead and rotate at the elbow downwards once it gets in like that we can close up this back panel we're going to extend as we just saw here kind of it's z'd up extend that down and then we're going to get the shoulder inside this cavity while getting this tab into the front of the wing. Like so. All right, so those are, those are it for the hands. We're going to untab the side body. You can also untab the wings themselves, uh, like so. So there's two sections that you'll be, two layers that you'll be untabbing, this layer and this layer. You want to open this up, and we're going to start dealing with... Um, the, the fuselage here. So once that's opened up, we can extend this all the way up like so. 
um, we'll go ahead and deal with this first. So that canopy that we flipped around before, we'll just do the reverse. We're going to rotate that around. This becomes the rear part of the canopy. So you just rotate this 180. Um, what's going on here? Do I have to open this up first? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Maybe I had to do the face first. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot that this interferes. Open this up. Close this up. Over the face. Sorry, did things... Oh, uh, man, I also forgot. Um, I mentioned that you do have to rotate the face for transformation again, which I really don't like doing. So you do have to rotate it all the way around. Close this up here. All right, so now with that compartment out of the way, I apologize. You want to go ahead and rotate the rear canopy out. Rock this back. And then that's the, the front of the vehicle. You can get the landing gear closed up for now. But make sure to extend this all the way. And then what we'll do is tab in the fuselage with these tabs here. So this tab section here will come up, tab in to both sides. Like so. So that is the, the canopy and front section, the nose cone. Now with these wings, we'll finish off the transformation. You want to kind of bring these down, rotate them forward. And then you'll see there's a pin joint here. You want to slide this all the way down. And then there's this um, uh, panel here that you're going to want to rotate 180. So you're going to want to rotate this all the way back like so. This piece, you're going to flip this down, bring this, uh, I forget what these things are called, I guess kind of landing gear, up, and then there's a little slot here, that's where these, this pin's going to reside. So make sure you have a position like this, squeeze it in until it snaps, and then you're going to go on to extend the wing and get it all into place here. So a pretty cool transformation, that, that's how you get one wing done. Same thing on the other side, so let's rotate this around. Get it uh, slid down on this pin. Untab here. Hey, Princeton, I appreciate it. I'm here, but late. Uh, let me know if there's a... No problem, Princeton, you're always here. And I gave late notice as usual. So let me know if there's any comparisons you want. We already have a bunch of requests, but let me know. So rotate this up, rotate this around, and get this pinned like so. This panel, once again, will rotate 180 degrees. And then we'll close this up. You can see that there's tabs here and here, as well as a slot for this one. So now we got a whole bunch of wing action. Um, the instructions kind of tell you to tab these in now. I feel fine that if you tab this in now, you're going to have a lot of problems with them coming loose and um, interfering with the most difficult part of the transformation, which we're getting to. So... I recommend you not do tab these in. They are going to be flopping around a bit, but just kind of get them up out of the way. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and extend the waist. Un unpeg this. Get it like so. Kind of want to get everything kind of like in 90 degrees here. You want to extend, as you can see, this um, telescoping joint. You want to extend that as much as you can. You have these... Hip skirts are on double hinges, so you're going to rock this down. And rock this down. And now we're going to start working on the lower legs. This is um, this first part's not that frustrating. I'll tell you where it starts getting super frustrating. So let me show the hips first. Flip these up because you're going to need to flip them up later anyway. But you need to get these down. Uh, these do feel a little scary, so you just want to pull on this. And you can see it untabbed here. That will bring this leg extension down. We'll just do that for both sides. So just be careful on that. Next thing we're going to do is rotate the thighs 90 degrees inwards. Like so. Uh, it gets kind of annoying. So um, the thighs can rotate inward with the thigh itself or the joint in. I find that it's better to, to rotate with the... Um, actual thigh piece, this white piece, and not this 
this piece here. But I don't think it ultimately matters all that much. But the legs are going to come to kind of come together like this. But coming around to the back is a little bit easier so you can see what's going on. So the first thing we'll do is extend the ankles because you're going to need a little bit of clearance here. We're going to untab this piece. And then we're going to extend this piece. So we untab it here. We're going to extend it. You might have some minor clearance issues here. Just get this around straightened out. This whole piece is on a telescoping joint. So you're going to pull this out. Rotate it 180. And while we're here, you can tuck in just this last piece here. All right, now this is where it starts getting complicated and kind of ugly, to be perfectly frank. Um, so what you're going to want to do is extend out the leg in a couple of places. So you can see there's this die cast piece here, this uh, silver piece, and there's also a red piece that it connects to. Both of those need to extend. So this red piece will come out, and you'll see in a second. But um, it feels a little bit scary, so you can see I extended the... Um, die cast piece, but that's not we're not done yet And again, this just feels a little scary so Just be careful extend this out. You can see now that you can see the entire piece sits flush here What you're going to want to do is rotate down on that red piece and you'll see what it does is it fills out the um, design in the turbine like so The next thing what you need to do is is bend at this joint here and then you're going to want to rotate this around like this <laughs> so it gets kind of complicated so i'm trying to show you what it looks like let's see from the bottom here this is what it kind of looks like so you'll have the leg going up and down you'll have a 90 degree bend going outwards at this red joint then a 90 degree bend at the die cast piece going uh, straight up into the air and then you'll have that bent piece here that fills in the um, details here. You need to have it in this position at the end ultimately. Um, and the reason why you need it in this specific uh, position is this little peg here. This peg needs to find its home on this back uh, inner thigh, I guess, inner thigh. There's right above the screw, you'll see a little peg hole there. That is the biggest pain in the butt to get done here. Um, so you need to get that done. So you need to open this up downwards. So this, this piece is inwards. And you need to get this piece pegged in there. But you also need to get this slot here tabbed in there. And while it sounds easy... It's so annoying because you have so many points of articulation here, 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 a rotation here, uh, this piece here. It's super frustrating. So it will probably take me quite a while to get this done. Um, I've tried, to, tried it a couple ways. I think maybe the easiest way is to actually get this tab in first, right there, and then push this in. And while it looks like, hey, Paik, you said that was super hard, um, and you just got it done, that's only one leg. It becomes really difficult when we try to get both in at the same time. So let's just pause there. We're going to do the, the tail end later. So let's repeat uh, here. So I'm going to go, again, pretty slowly, extend out the ankle so it's fully extended. We're going to untab this little tab here. We're going to untab this piece and extend this around the ankle. We're going to telescope this piece out. You can see a telescope out here. Rotate 180. Fold up that little tab piece. And then we got to do the leg extension. So extend. So I just extended the die cast piece. Now I got to extend the red piece. There we go. Now you can see that is sitting flush. So we got to bend 90 degrees here here and then rotate uh oh no sorry got to rotate this like so so the screw is facing downwards uh did somebody else just donate wild bill i think just donated all right 
So anyway, now we again have these 90 degrees, right? So legs should be up and down eventually. This will be 90 degrees out. This will be 90 degrees down. This will be 90 degrees bent too. So a lot of 90 degrees. Just make sure they're all right angles. If you, they're not right angles, they're wrong angles. Um, where are we now? All right, so once again, get this tucked in. I find getting these tabbed in first make it a little bit easier. And then you can tab in this section that kind of holds into place in the meantime. Then you can kind of hopefully find your way into these rear behind the thigh or inner thigh tabs. Um, much easier said than done. You might be have luck coming in between here, but these things kind of get in the way. So if you can kind of push in there. Oh, wow. All right, it worked. All right, this is going way better than I had imagined. So go ahead and just tab in the rest. Wow, I made this look super easy. It, uh, I, I can't imagine that any of you will have that much of an easy time. Uh, these are also over and under tabs. So just close this up. Come on. All right, so maybe I found the secret sauce. But again, make sure that these legs are straight. Um, I can't see a gap here, so it looks like I did actually get these pegged in correctly. And again, it worked way better than I had imagined. All right, since we're already here, we can go actually deal with the wings now since they flop around a bit. So just bring them down. There is a tab here. And then uh, this tab, once it gets situated in here, you're going to fold down the, the hip skirt and that will lock that into place. So get that done. And that down. Yeah, this is going super well. I thought I was going to be here forever, to be perfectly honest, because it, it's taking me multiple times to do that, and I've never gotten that, that smoothly. So just follow these directions, and you'll be good. All right, now coming to the, the back, we're actually at the easy parts now. So once these are fully extended, we're going to deal with the feet. So uh, have it positioned any way you really want. As long as you see the bottom of the feet here, you want to untab this part first. It has a little peg here. We'll just extend this around. Extend this one. That was tabbed in as well. And then you're going to see that this whole piece will open up. And you're going to want to pull. There's a rotational joint here. So pull this down all the way. And then that will allow you to give just enough clearance to open this flap all the way up. And then you'll close that back down. That will tab into place. We're going to rotate this all the way around so that these line up. And there's one little trick here. Uh, this is where the ankle tilt is. You want to push like so to get it in at an angle. That will allow you to sit at the right angle coming in. Lastly, we're going to flip up this last tail fin piece here, like so. This piece on the heel will tab in there. And that's one side done. We'll repeat on this side. So once again, just come to the bottom of the foot here. We're going to open this section up. This side is a little bit different because once you open this up, you'll see that the landing gear is there. So you're going to want to pull this out as well. Come to this side. As I mentioned, you're going to want to rotate this piece as far as you can. This will give you enough room for this piece to come down. This will come back up, rotate, and tab that into place. Straighten out the rest of the tail here and here. I'm QC30. And then you're going to want to rotate this piece like so. This just this uh, tip piece here. So it was like this. You want to rotate it that way. Get it all the way around. This tab will go into the rear of the fuselage. The part that was supposed to give me a lot of trouble, but apparently didn't for some reason. Because why would it? Why would it support my my frustration? Just make me out to be a liar. And then just go ahead and tab in the back half. And with that. We have Power Glide or Warthog, as it were. 
Uh, I guess we've got to do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, there, that is one area that is kind of frustrating. Um, I always have a bit of a crack here. I try to squeeze it, but there's no real easy way to get into that area unless you have really small fingers. So just do your best to minimize that gap. But with that, uh, you have him in alt mode pretty much. There are some landing gear here. So on the side here, you can pull these wheels down there. And there, those are pretty tough. And then pull this one down from the front that we saw before. Um, I do feel that it does not sit completely straight. So when I have these landing gear out, um, usually one of them was either the front or back is off the ground, but not a big deal. But yeah, a lot of mass shifting. You get this really svelte, long... Sorry, he's kind of janked up because I haven't cleaned him up. But... You can get the wings quite straight, like so. But yeah, he's very svelte. That tiny bot extends into this really long plane, which we saw, and that was the things that thing that most people were really amazed by, the mass shifting. They did a really good job with that. Um, there is a lot of die cast in this figure. I'm not going to go through it all, but a lot of pieces in the back, um, in the center here, um, even all of the engineering, I think the thighs, um, yeah, so a lot of die cast in th this tiny figure to get it to look this nice. So while there are some frustrating parts, really just that one part that, again, didn't look frustrating for some reason, um, I think you guys will have trouble with it the first time, though. So yeah, you can see that it doesn't want to really sit flat with all the landing gear down, but I'm sure you can make adjustments to that. Uh, the... Alt mode storage for the weapon. It doesn't show this in the manual. I don't think it showed it in the video manual either. You just have a tab here and slots on either either wing. They don't show it in the manual. It's at, like in the instructions, but they do have an image of it. So if you were paying attention, you would be able to see that. Like so. And then the landing gear attachment. So this is the other one. You want to come up kind of up underneath this uh, crotch plate. And there's a peg here, so you're going to want to go do that. And there's a small peg at the front as well. So this will, again, attach to your Fans Toys official flight stand. Again, I don't have that. But yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Where is this woman? What is woman? Wom woman? Is that what you're talking about, woman? Um, the canopy doesn't really open because of the transformation. I guess you can say it opens like this. Let's see if Spike will fit in there. Where's Spike? Oh, there he is. Uh, he actually might be able to fit if you finagle him some weird way. He's, he's probably not going to sit normally. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got him. That's the first time I tried that. So he does fit in. He's a little weirdly positioned, but you can get him in there. All right. Um, comparison, I don't have any jets in uh, alt mode. And again, I'm doing a live stream, so I can't compare him to Rick Defend's alt mode because I only have one of those. But we have streak. That's all we need. So you can see how wide he is in compares comparison to streak. He's like four streaks wide and about one and a half streaks long. If you want another red color vehicle, he's about two bumblebees long. Uh, not really much else to say in terms of this figure, in terms of playability. Again, his landing gear, his flight stand, and the gun storage are pretty much it. Um, I do kind of like that they went out of the way to make this a little bit larger to be more scale accurate. Um, it's kind of a weird, weird position, but, but yeah. It's hard to get it, like, fully seated to kind of sit inside that but it, it is what it is it's fine i do kind of wish they would just have more universal support for flight stands because again the the fans toys flight stand is pretty trash um fang says xtv glider who's glider i don't know who glider is so clearly i do not have him pick another comparison all right give me a second i'm gonna go see if there's any questions let me take a break from talking and see what questions we have. Uh, compare it with Skyfire. Yeah, Princeton, you donated, so I'll do that. 
Uh, Ron Wyan says, take to the, do the pieces feel solid and not fragile? Yeah, the, most of the pieces feel solid. Um, but again, some of their thin pieces, especially this thing, when you're collapsing and extending it, that feels a little um, fragile. And then that the hip piece here, when you had to uh, pull those down, that feels a little fragile. Nothing super scary. Um, this landing gear back here isn't the best either. So, but there are a lot of really thin pieces and connections that feel okay, but it, it definitely doesn't feel super solid. And like I said, the, the joints themselves in some areas don't feel that great. Are those miscolored panels die cast? Um, so this, this piece is plastic, but yeah, as I mentioned, not all of the red is color matched. So this is die cast down here and this is plastic. Um, these panels are all plastic, but they're slightly off. This part is die cast. So again, it's not terrible. Like when you look at it, you can probably see it. Like this part of this red isn't the same as this red here. But since they're so far apart, you probably wouldn't notice. But you'll notice that this part here doesn't match with there. So it looks kind of like splotchy or mismatchy in a bit. But only if you're really looking for it. And it's obviously much more noticeable underneath my lights. But it's not, it's not terrible. And again, depending on the angle you have, they kind of look like they're the same color. So it's fine. Um, but yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get this guy transformed back into uh, only on camera in your lighting. Yeah. I mean, again, in person you'll see it, but it's not so terrible that you're going to be like, OCD about it, I don't think. I think the worst part is this tail fin piece. These two pieces match, but don't match this section. The wings are a lot less noticeable. Um, but yeah. All right, so let's get, get, this, get this guy transformed back into robot mode to finish off the review. Try to get this done within an hour. It is a weekday after all. We got work. At least I got work. So we're going to come to the back here. Uh, I actually want to get rid of the wings too, because again, these thighs butt up against the wings and you got to move the thighs. So it just makes sense to kind of get rid of these. So open these tabs up and just kind of get the wings up and out of the way for now. And now we'll come to the back. We just want to split the rear section here. We'll take care of each of these feet individually. Uh, so we'll want to fold up this tip here, just this tip section, not both just this part. We're going to come down, rotate this piece to separate this tab, just get it out of the way. And then you can rotate this all the way down, fold this down like so. And then you have these two flaps. So this one has to go in first, that tab goes in here. And this one slightly overlaps. There's a little uh, cutout here for this piece and tabs in there. And then you just want to adjust the ankle um, tilt. And then we're going to keep this extended because we need to get that clearance for this one piece in the rear fuselage. So same thing on this side. The only slight difference is it has the landing gear. So first up, this rear piece of, this, uh, of the wing tip here. We're going to extend this rotation. We're going to close this landing gear up first. Don't close this one up yet. Rotate this all the way down. Close this up. Now we'll fold in this side and tab that in. And then we can fold in this side, which will cover the landing gear as well. Again, adjust the ankle tilt, and then we'll leave that extended for now. Next up, we're going to go ahead and split the difficult section of the rear fuselage. We're going to untab here, untab there, and then we'll take these legs one at a time. Uh, so first up, we'll just go ahead and extend this. Rotate this around. And then we're going to deal with the knees. So we'll just go ahead and straighten this out. Straighten this out. Straighten this out. Um, what you want to do is get the screw holes, these two screws, lined up like so. And then I always forget um, how this other section works. But you're going to want to rotate that at some point. Um, so you're going to go ahead and, and, and collapse these. Again, be careful because there's so many moving parts. If you're just trying to 
push in, you might be able to get one down, but not both. But you want to get this fully uh, compacted like so. Actually, this is not even fully done. But let's uh, keep going. I find it a little bit easier to deal with this um, at a later time. We'll open this up. Close this around. We do need to rotate this around the heel. And you have to make sure that this heel, uh, this ankle, uh, is positioned in a certain way that, that will allow this to tab in because there needs to be a little bit of extra clearance here. So um, I'll show you what I mean. So if you just try to close this up while it's flush here, you can't tab this in. You have to actually have to rotate the... Um, the leg like so, so it's off-centered. And then this piece will be able to tab in. Uh, tab in here, and this piece will come around and tab in there. So if, it's hard to explain, but this whole piece has to, has to fit in there. You'll see this kind of a slight cutout here from this full circle. You need to have this cut out so that this piece can sit in correctly. All right. From there, we'll rotate at, we already rotated at thigh. We just have to rotate at the knee now. Uh, like, like so. Oh, did I mess up? Oh, something's wrong. No, yeah, so this is supposed to be... In, oh, okay, sorry. This is supposed to be rotated around like this. Sorry about that. Yeah, I knew something was wrong because this piece has to be on the back. And then, again, the screws should be aligned with each other. Yeah. And now we can collapse this down, theoretically. There we go. So, all right, there we go. Jeez, I don't know why took, that took that was way harder than it was supposed to be. That was supposed to be the easy part. So let's do that again. Uh, so again, here, let's go ahead and get this extended. Rotate this piece around. Open this up. While we close this flap up, we do need to get this longer piece extended in around and again this cutout has to be correctly positioned uh, like so so again this weird cutout piece here with these well, i don't know it looks like guns almost has to be in the correct position so that this can sit in and not run into any interference with the um, with the uh, ankle. Align the screws, but then rotate at the die cast piece so that we can collapse all this up. Oh, jeez. All right, we're going to deal with the late last part of that collapsing once the legs are all solid. All right, there we go. Uh, last thing we have to do with the lower legs is go ahead and bring these up. So bring these up and snap them in to the hip. Get these up, snapped into the hip, and rotated in the correct position. And again, make sure that you collapse these knees all the way in. And again, I find that these are super annoying. They should just collapse in all the way, but for some reason, sometimes they just don't want to get in all the way. All right, F it. I'm going to deal with that once we're finally in robot mode. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and deal with the hip skirts. Get these rocked up on those double hinges, like so. Uh, do I want to deal with the wings now, or do I want to deal with the head first? Uh, I guess we'll deal with the head first. All right, dealing with the head. Get this canopy forward we're going to want to untab these sections here one 
and two. We're gonna rotate the canopy in, rotate this back, and then we'll do the face. We're gonna bring this double panel downwards. We're gonna collapse this in, the accordion on in on themselves, and close up. Rotate the face, which again, I hate this part of the transformation. Like so. All right, with that done, we want to split this part of the canopy just enough so that this can collapse in and down. And now we'll deal with the arms slash wings. First thing we'll do is go ahead and pull down, well actually pull out on this wing tip, this whole, basically that half. Pull down to release this tab. Fold this up, fold this down, and you'll see there's a little slot there for this to fold up and lock into. We're gonna slide this up and rotate this back. This is gonna basically accordion on itself, so this is gonna fold up like this. This is gonna fold down to lock that into place. And then this panel, once again, has to rotate 180 degrees. So push in on the top and bring this all the way down. And you'll see that that brings the wing into the chest, like so. So that's that side done. Same thing on this side. Again, rotate this forward. We're gonna go ahead and pull back to unlock these tabs here. Pull in or down on this piece here with the wheel. Rotate it inwards, rotate it downwards. Tab this in like so. We're gonna telescope this piece up and then get this around like this. This is gonna fold up like so. This will fold down to lock it into place. As we lift this up, rotate this small panel once again, 180, so that it's facing downwards. So the hollow side should be facing inside to the body. That will tab in here and here. And then once you have that done, you can tab in these two tabs into the side of the body or side of the neck. All right, now we're close to being done. Next up, we're gonna untab this here. We're gonna rotate all of this out by first opening up this piece. And then we're gonna rotate, I guess, uh, clockwise in this direction to get the, the bicep out of, out of this area. We're gonna open up the panel that covers the fist, get the fist out. We're gonna double hinge this whole forearm piece in on itself. Close that up. Close this up here. And then tab this in. Now you have the arm done. The last thing you have to do on this side is to accordion these wings in to get them a little bit thinner. Don't know if that was really necessary, but it is what it is. Same thing on this side. So untab here. Open up this flap. We're gonna rotate this time counterclockwise. No, yeah, counterclockwise to get the bicep out. Open up the fist. Double hinge the forearm piece in on itself. Clab, uh, close this up. Close this up. Tab that in. Get the arm down. And we're going to accordion this like so. Lastly, <laughs> lastly, we're going to collapse in on itself. So just give it a little push here to get this collapsed and in. And again, there is a little telescoping joint here, but that kind of works itself out. Uh, the only thing that is, is not fully done right now are the stupid knees, which is my least favorite part just because there's so many pieces and because it doesn't always want to collapse easily on itself. And I don't know why. Um, I thought there might be a specific position that you need to have it to collapse it, but I don't know. So that one got done. You can see that it's a little bit higher than the other one. You just have to, you just have to push. And I just don't like that design or engineering. 
especially because there's multiple levels of collapsing that has to be done on the same section. But yeah, we made it in just under an hour, both ways of transformation and the full review. Um, so let me go ahead and stop here, give my final thoughts before we do the comparisons that I owe a plethora of people here that they paid for. So final thoughts are, I think this is a overall good figure. It is a little finicky and a little concerning with um, some of the tolerances, especially some of the articulation pieces here. So like the knee section and that whole mechanism there is not my favorite. Uh, I really dislike how it was designed and it's a little loose as you can tell. And because you're using it so often for transformation, if you transform your figure a decent amount, it's bound to get even looser. Um, the tolerances here on the ankles are pretty loose here, as you can see. And they're pins, so I can't even tighten them unless you use kind of like kiki or floor, floor polish. Uh, but overall, he feels solid and he looks really great. So robot mode looks great, alt mode looks great. And the transformation overall is pretty fun, except that one, one section with the knees that have to peg into these little holes here as well as into the main center fuselage. It's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, I think once you do it a couple times and if, if you play very close attention to the angles that I described and those tips, you should be able to master it in a, in a couple of transformations. But it is definitely frustrating the first couple of times. If you're watching this video on the rewind trying to transform your figure, let me know if it went as easily for you the first time as I just showed, or if you struggled as well. Um, all right, so let me look at questions one more time. G Tony says, can you compare it with Fans Toys Sheridan Warpath? I can do that. I have him somewhere, so I owe you. Uh, Jonathan Walker says, how does the red mis mis mismatch look in person, and does the red uh, does the red FT metal paint... What? And does the red the FT metal paint to it? I don't know. Is that a sentence, John Donaldson Walker? Uh, but we kind of already talked about there. There definitely are some mismatches. In hand, it's not as bad for the most part. Um, but in alt mode, you definitely do see it a lot more. But it's not that bad. The, the most I actually see it in this mode is this back panel here compared to this. And you can see that on uh, as part of the wings. You'll see it uh, in alt mode. But it's not terrible. Frankly, Law says, does the engineering transformation transformation take away from your enjoyment of this guy? 100%. Uh, the knees are super annoying. Um, and every time you like want to do a knee bend that's more than this much, you have to extend the knee and then you have to collapse it back again. It's super frustrating. I do not like that. Um, and then again, uh, although it didn't look that bad, uh, I, I assure you that I bet almost every one of you will struggle like hell the first time trying to get that fuselage stuff in. And again, be mindful to pay attention to how these are supposed to be oriented with the screws um, always being aligned here and so forth. Uh, but yeah, I would say it's a, it's a good figure. Um, definitely a shelf presence looks great in both modes, but the, the transformation is definitely the weak point of, of, of this one. Um, but yeah. Let's go ahead and, uh, so yeah, if you guys want one of these, uh, you can still grab one from Toy Dojo. Uh, Thang, uh, I owe you a comparison. I know. All right, Skyfire. Uh, which Skyfire do you want, Princeton? I have, well, you didn't specify, so we're going to go with the one I currently just have. Easily available. So this is the Fans Toys one. This is Phoenix. Sorry, he's so big that uh, you're not going to get a really good measure of scale here. All of them? Yeah. All right. So I owe Springer and what else do I owe? I owe more. All right. So let me get Springer and Warpath. All right, here's Warpath. Uh, Springer will take me a little bit. Uh, who else do I owe comparisons to? Uh, oh. 
Oh, uh, TM. I know TM. TM reviews. Who did he want? He wanted somebody, somebody random, I feel like. Sight says sold out already? Really? He said script, sk skip Springer and do Road King. Oh, Toy Dojo's in there. He, he said check in two days. Um, Anthony Brown says Road King. Oh, you guys always want comparisons with bots that are in the back of my, my shelves. All right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure TM wanted somebody else. That's for Sutton? Okay. Love Pake, not always... Check in the chat. Sorry if I missed the chat. Uh, oh, tracks, tracks. That's what TM wanted. Thank you. Yeah, nobody, nobody ever requests tracks. What a, what a weird request. Track sucks. Toy Dojo, no. Don't want to get all the mini bots together. You can fil filter on fan funded messages. How do I do that? Oh, cool. Yeah, you can. Uh, Thang said glider, but I can't do glider. Princeton, I took care of. Jonathan, uh, I don't know what you wanted. Got Anthony Brown, G Tony. What did you want, G Tony? Keith Lee wanted bubble tea, but again, I don't have bubble tea. So, so Thang and Jonathan Walker and G Tony. If I didn't get what you wanted, let me know. Uh, let me close the let me close the poll. So really quick, I asked, do you think pa Power Glide and Astoria got together in the end? Sixty-two of you percent of you are are romantics and said they did. All right, so we'll end the poll there. Uh, let me check the Q&A one last time. Uh, Travis White... No, that's the wrong one. Oh, did I close the Q&A? Okay, I might have closed the Q&A by accident. Oh, G Tony, you did more back. Okay, cool, thanks. All right. So I think we're good with the with all of the requests, except Thang. I don't know what Thang wanted. And again, sorry I don't have X, XTB Glider, but here again, since I don't have Glider, we'll bring back Rick Finn again. Yeah, Glider? That figure's so old. Uh, Thang said, I thought you meant they just had a one-night stand. No, no, no. <laughs> come on. Clearly they got together at least once. I'm, just, I'm saying if they rode off into the sunset of happiness together. So yeah, this is it for the review. Thanks for everyone for sticking with me for the last hour or so. Wow, almost 100 of you. I uh, hope you guys appreciated it. Um, it took a, a while to get this guy um, figured out. Uh, I got him around seven o'clock and I just basically nonstop mess with him until, until 10 o'clock. So that's why we started late. Uh, we will be doing some more reviews, uh, later this week. I do have finally this figure. I was going to go ahead and, um, review him today, actually, until I found out that Warpath would, uh, uh, Warthog, Warthog would be coming today. So that will come later this week. Um, this coming Saturday, so in what one, two, three, three days, four days, uh, we'll have Chatterday. It's going to be about conventions, uh, modern day conventions for all sorts of hobbies. Whether what are the pros, what are the cons, what are people's thoughts on whether they're necessary or not? You know, a lot of folks um, are not going to cons, they're not doing cons big anymore. Things like E3, even it's SDCC. Uh, Marvel didn't do anything on Hall H this time. Um, Transformers conventions in particular, we'll talk about those. 
And then next Saturday will be the return of Jeopardy, which will be, uh, we already have three contestants lined up, three, um, three viewers. So just three r random viewers who volunteered that wanted to be part of the show. They'll uh, compete for a slot in the grand finals where the winner of that will get a prize. So if you have any interest in participating in Chatterday or the Jeopardies that are coming up, uh, make sure to click the Discord link. That's to my Discord in, this, in the uh, description below. Otherwise, that's going to be it for today, everyone. I really appreciate it. I love doing the live streams. They're always the most fun part of my week. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what we're doing, then go ahead and give it a thumbs down, but at least leave a comment letting me know what you didn't like about it because that is actually helpful as well. All right. Hope you guys have a great evening, and we'll talk uh, later this week. Have a good one, all.